When you compose music, there are a few important things in a software application. And the first thing is ease of use. Difficult to use application to prevent composers from writing the best music that they can. The next important factor is flexibility. If your music notation application doesn't make it easy to edit your music, your music will end up sounding very robotic. And here's a quick example of how I transform Daniel's MIDI file using Music Jotter. Notice how responsive the playback is. This is very important in the music application. Accessibility is also important. If this program is $600 and it requires you to install it, we alienate those who don't have the full $600 or the technical knowledge to install a product like this. Functionality is also pretty important as well. And that comes in the form of out of the box features and the ability to be modified using custom plugins. And the final important factor is speed of the application. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Music Jotter's speed and how its speed alone will separate it from the others. Now there are various aspects of speed. For example, how long does it take to save a MIDI file? And what about the loading times of the scores? Also, how responsive is the music application overall? Well, I'm going to be demonstrating to you how fast this application really is. Uh, now that I've spent time eliminating all of the latency issues, this application is tremendously fast and responsive. This product is extremely fast. If you want me to continue working on the efficiency of this product, then don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be constantly addressing speed efficiency. Now I'm recording on a MacBook and before I improved the speed and reduce the latency, this was very choppy. But here, um, actually on youngcomposers.com, this is where I'm going to install Music Jotter for early access supporters. And you can see while I'm recording, recording usually takes up resources and it makes things pretty slow. So even while I'm recording, while I'm on youngcomposers.com, you can see how smooth this is. So this is the note cursor and it's literally just as fast as the mouse cursor that you can see here. So here's the mouse cursor you can see the note cursor takes over it's just as fast it's a dynamic note cursor so, so it's always updating in the background and the speed has been improved the latency has been eliminated so as I add notes you can see how smooth it is to edit your notes while you're adding them so this is something I'm very excited about and you can see deleting notes also is very quick. So I've also implemented undo and redo in the past month. And you can see the undo and redo is also very fast. Like look at that, like how fast that is. Like super, super duper fast. <laughs> And there's a couple of cool attributes for this undo and redo. So let me just go back. You can see you can do a lot. You can do like partial selection. I haven't showed partials, copy and select in detail yet, but let's say you copy a couple of notes. You can do multi selection like this, copy it. And then you can also paste in certain patterns. Like if you desire. So this is something that's pretty unique to Music Jotter. And so it'll allow you to paste partial notes and patterns that you select. Um, so you can undo and redo that as well. So I had to make sure that I implemented the undo and redo so that it would reflect that. So as you can see, it does, it does get it. It's pretty cool. I'm very excited about this too. So it's almost like Microsoft Word where you can almost like go anywhere in your score and and make an edit and you can undo and redo and it's almost like a word processor so you can also change your to your your booklet view page view linear view all very quickly 
whereas before it was taking a little bit longer because it was just the way that it was designed. Uh, so I, I took about a week and a half to change some of the architecture around Music Jotter so that it can be quicker over the internet. And as a result, uh, we have a, a much smoother user experience. And this includes adding measures. So if you double click a measure, you can add a measure in between, in between uh, different measures. You can also right click, delete measures like that. You can also add measures like this in between, like alternating measures like this. So if you select individual measures, right click, add measures, you can see that it it enters in measures in between the measures that I selected and you can continue with the pattern if you want. So right click, add measures. And it's a quick way to make adjustments to your score. And also remove these measures as well. So pretty cool little trick. There's a lot of tricks with music genre that I'll go over. Uh, but you can do, do the same thing with tracks. So if you select two tracks like this, right click and add tracks, you can see that it will alternate the tracks. So these two were added in between these here. Uh, so it's a very quick way of making adjustments to your score. And here's your page. If you go into page view, you can select your pages like this. It's quick. So page view is going to focus just on the notes that you see so it'll make it a little bit quicker I still have to work on speed when it comes to larger scores so let's say you have a thousand plus notes music Jutter will right now cur currently doesn't handle that very well but it's something that I will work on right now I'm focused on the user interface and, and getting rid of the latency and uh, smaller scores, loading smaller scores quicker. And then I'll work on larger scores. So the user experience is right now tested for smaller to modest, modestly sized scores. And again, you can select notes like this, delete, done, pretty quick. Undo, redo really fast and music jotter will save your score every 30 seconds it'll auto save but there's other, there are other tech techniques to save your score you can click up here to save it um, or let's say, so let's say you input a couple of notes here and then you close out of your score what it'll do is it'll, it'll warn you first so you can either stay on the page or you can leave the page if you if you do end up hitting leave page, it's going to save the score for you so that you're protected just in case you make a mistake and close out. So there's a couple of safety measures here. Again, every 30 seconds, it saves the score. You can save it yourself periodically or when you refresh the score, it's going, it'll, it'll save it for you. And then you can also download the file as well. So, so if you want to keep it on your computer, then just, just click on this download file so that when I do eventually put Music Jotter as a desktop application and create it as a desktop application, then the MIDI file that you download will be 100% compatible with that version. So you'll be able to work with your, your MIDI file either on your desktop computer or if you decide to want to work on, on the web version, it'll be interchangeable. This is supposed to give you a very fluid experience composition ex experience that's what music daughter aims to do so if you start out with the cloud and eventually get the desktop version you'll be able to use your midi file on the desktop version and interchange between the two so cool I just wanted to give you a quick update of, of the speed update that I've created and it was important for me to do this because I'm going to be opening up early access pretty soon and it'll be a patreon basically so it'll be a monthly fee probably i'll have two tiers either six dollars a month or twelve dollars a month so basically the patreon is aimed to help fund development while i continue to work on improving this product
and it gives me the chance to talk to you about what improvements I could make uh, during the development process. So this speed update is very important because it eliminates the latency of this product. Even on the internet, over the cloud, there's no latency issues anymore. And this is going to greatly improve the user experience. Now, when you compare that with the low latent playback system, this is going to be a tool that you will have fun using and you won't even realize that you're in a computer software environment because it's just that fluid.